Some of you may know, a few years ago when we started up our channel, we actually did a Roblox Studio series on teaching you how to make a speed simulator. However, this series was outdated, it was really rushed, the code wasn't very optimised, and all in all, it just wasn't a very well scripted series at all. So what I'm doing now is we're going, we're going to reboot this series. It's going to be an updated version. It will be more precise, more accurate. I'll explain things in more detail. And all in all, it's going to be better. Recently, we posted a poll onto our YouTube channel community page. And I basically asked, would people like to see us reboot this series again? And most people said yes and it was a lot i think it was something like 80 to 20 percent ratio so it was pretty good so seeing as the majority of people would like us to restart this series or reboot it that is what we're going to be doing but this is going to be far more updated and better just in general so let's get right into it people okay so here we are we've got a base plate for a roblox game now i'm not going to show you how to set up a new roblox project we may do that in the future i can make a separate video if you would like but once you've set up your roblox project you will have a plain base plate. I've just got some extra bits and bobs because this was kind of a storage dump for my uh, my other games. Okay, so to get started, we need to make some leader stats. So under server script service, we need to add a script. And I'm just going to rename the script to leader stats. And in here, this is where we're going to create our leader stats. So if you don't know what leader stats are, they're basically a uh, kind of like a leaderboard top right of the screen. It's like a local leaderboard for, and it will display all of the players' stats. So to make to create this, we need to create a function which will be called whenever a player joins the game. That function will be game dot players dot player added colon connect function and then we need to pass in the player that's joining the game. So this is creating a function that will be called whenever a player joins the game. Now when the player joins the game, we need to create a new instance which will be a folder. It'll be, the, it'll be the leader stats and we also need to create another instance which will be an integer and that will be the points that the player has. So let's create our local leader stats. So we use local to define a local variable and we're going to set this equal to instance.new so it'll be a brand new object which we're going to create as a folder and we're going to put a comma after this folder and then put a pl the player and I'm using PLR for short and we're going to pass that in as well. That means we're creating a new folder and it's going to be inside of the player. What we can do now is say leader stats dot name equals leader stats. Spelt exactly like this, all lowercase, it has to be spelt exactly like that or it will not work. And now we need to create our points. So local points equals instance dot new, same thing as above here. But this, rather than being a folder, this is going to be an int value for a integer value or an integer is a whole number. And then a comma, and rather than putting a pl putting this inside the player, we want to put this inside the leader stats. And now let's call this points dot name equals, and we'll call this points. And we also now need another value, points dot value equals zero. Just so the default value of points is zero, so the player starts with no points. And that's it for our leader stats. Okay, now we can close up our leader stats script, and under workspace we need to add a script. And we're going to rename this to events. This is where all the main events of our game will happen. So within this script, we need to... Essentially, we're going to have a remote event inside inside of the script, which will add our points together. Now, of course, you don't have to have this events under workspace, but we are going to just for the sake of ease. So we're going to add in a remote event. And I'm going to rename it to add points. Now this script is going, in this script we need to write script.addPoints, which is the remote event we've just made, dot on server event, so when a server event is called, we need to say colon connect function, and once again we're going to pass in a player. Now we need to add one to the points value, player dot leader stats dot points dot value plus equals one. This will add one to the value of points. Okay, now that we've made that, we need to make the script that is going to adjust our speed, the player's walk speed, based on the number of points they have. Because after all, this is a speed simulator, and you need to get more points to become quicker. So under server script service, we're going to add a script, which I'm going to rename to speed, because that's what it does. Or actually, I'm going to call it speed manager. I'm going to rename it to speed manager. And inside the script, we need to 
create sort of do some basic calculations. So we're going to say while weight 0 0.5 do. So what this is doing is every half a second it's going to run whatever code is inside of here. We don't want to do this uh, while wait because otherwise it's going to do it. I think it would be something like, I could be wrong here, like 33 times a second. I might be wrong. Um, it'll do it about 33 times a second, I'm pretty sure, which we don't really want. That will get very intensive and laggy. Whereas this, it'll do it two times a second. So you can kind of see why, yeah, this is a bit better. Anyway, now let's say local children. Because what we need to do now is create a local variable called children. Which is going to be equal to uh, the number of players in the game. So we'll set that equal to game.players colon get children. So the children variable will be a table of every player in the game. We now need to loop through every player to check, to make sure, one, that they have a character, and two, they have a humanoid. And if they have those, we can then change their speed. So let's say, for i equals 1, comma, hashtag children, do. Now this is creating a for loop, which will run some code every time, uh, well, from i equals 1 to the number that's what the hashtag is, the number of children. So say there's 10 children, this code will run from 1 to 10 times. So that's 10 times. So now what we actually need to do in this for loop is check if the character, if the player has a character. So if children, and now we're going to do some square brackets i, so the index of the child. So say i is set to 3, because every time it loops through the number of children, it will increase by 1. So, uh, let's say we're on the third child, I will be free. So, if the third child is basically what we're saying here, dot character is not equal to nil, then this is basically saying if we have a character, then we're going to run some code. Local human, or hum, I'm just going to call it, for humanoid equals children. Once again, I, because we want we want to access this character again. Dot character. Dot humanoid, and then we'll say if children. We don't actually need to do. Sorry, we don't actually need to do an if statement to um, see whether the player has a humanoid. Because with Roblox, if a player has a character, they will have a humanoid. If the player dies, they don't lose their humanoid, but they lose their whole character in general. So. We don't actually need to check if they have a humanoid. So next we want to basically check to see if the player's points are above zero. Because it shouldn't be possible for them to be below zero. But say for whatever reason, maybe there was a bug or something like that. We need to make sure we're only doing it. Because otherwise they're going to end up having well, negative speed. And how can you have negative speed? So we need to make sure to prevent errors that we add this line of code. If children i dot leader stats dot points dot value is greater than or equal to zero, then we'll perform the calculation. And by the way, I am aware you can technically have negative speed if you're talking about velocity. You can have a negative velocity or you know a negative acceleration. Or anything like that but just in basic terms in Roblox how can you have a negative speed that's yeah <laughs> there we are anyway now what we need to do is perform a calculation to change our walk speed so we'll say hum dot walk speed which will change the walk speed of the player is going to be equal to children I once again accessing that child dot leader stats dot points dot value but say the player has 100 points, we don't want them to have 100 walk speed, that's ridiculously quick. We want to have some sort of, we want to have some sort of diminisher to decrease the uh, amount of speed they're going to have. So let's just divide it by 20. So if they've got 0 points, then their walk speed will be 0. That's a problem, is it not? So to fix that problem, we're just going to add one, just to make sure they can never have zero walk speed. So now let's see, let's say they have 10 points. Their walk speed is going to be 10 divided by 20. That's a half, 0 0.5, plus one, 1 1.5 walk speed. Very slow. Let's say they have got 1,000 points. 
that will be 1000 divided by 20, that is 50, plus 1, that's 51, and you can see it works. Okay, what we want to do next is under starter GUI, we want to create a local script, and I'm going to rename this to movement. This doesn't actually need to be under starter GUI, we could put this under starter character scripts or starter player scripts. In fact, I'm actually going to put this script under starter player scripts, so it will be called, well, so this script will start running when the player joins the game. Now, in this movement script, we're going to wait about four seconds just to give the player time to load in. That's the only reason we're doing that. And then we're going to set the player, so we'll say local player equals game dot players dot local player so because this is a local script it runs on uh, the client so we can simply reference the player by saying game dot players dot local player and that is the the player that the script is attached to we then will say while wait 0 0.5 seconds again do because once again 0 0.5 seconds that's only being called twice a second that's not too bad we'll say if game dot players in fact, we don't even need to say that. We can say if player colon wait for child or find first child uh, character. I mean, the reason we want to do find first child is because if we do get a uh, player if player dot character, then but the player dies and they don't have a character, and this script runs, we'll get loads of errors in our output. Whereas if we say find first child character, if they can't find the character. It will just there won't be any errors. It will just stop running that code and repeat it in the, the next 0 0.5 seconds, so it prevents errors. So if player can find first child character dot humanoid dot move direction. So this is the direction the uh, direction the player is moving in dot magnitude. So the magnitude of the direction is greater than zero, then. So this is basically, in short, saying if the player is moving and not standing still, then we want to fire, under our event script, we want to fire the adds point fun uh, remote event. So workspace.events.addpoints colon fire server. And if you remember under this event script, we, part we uh, have a player as a parameter here. We don't need to actually pass in the player it's automatically done when you do fire server. So if we were to now hit uh, play, let me just put a spawn pad into this game, like so. If I was to then hit play, you will see when we load in, you'll see we have a leaderboard, which we can tab in and out. That is our leader stats that we made earlier. And you'll see when we move, we're really slow because we have zero points. So we have, I think it's one walk speed. Um, we've got an error here, attempt to index nil with humanoid, and that's okay because debugging's all about uh, finding these errors and solving them. So maybe it, what we can do, let's just say player dot character dot humanoid, see if that will run, rather than the find first child, we'll see what this does, this might not work at all, it might make it even worse, right, so, so far I'm not seeing any errors, we'll walk in, and our points are going up. So the find first child was the problem. After we've removed that, the problem went. The only problem we might have now is if we reset the character and start moving, we might get errors. No, we're not getting errors. That's fine. So that is perfect. Yeah, as you can see, we're getting more points. We're getting faster. And there we go. That is the first thing I wanted to show you, the movement and the leader stats of the game. Next episode, we're going to go over saving data to try and get that done earlier just so it's easier and there's not as much to worry about in the future. So I'll see you in that episode, everyone. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this one helpful and more and better than the last series. If you would like to get ahead, you can watch our old series, but it's not very good. I highly recommend you just wait for the next episode. I'm not sure when it will be, but we're going to try and post these regularly while uploading other videos as well. So... It, I'm maybe planning on maybe releasing two of these videos a, a week and a, maybe one or two other videos but you can expect the next episode very soon so I'll see you in the next one everyone thanks for watching and goodbye